Some of you are not doing so well. You have issues. Let's talk about them. Our troubles begin when we're little kids and um, we are traumatized somehow. In many ways we're traumatized. And um, most of us never get over those childhood traumas. Okay. Um, it doesn't take a lot. Bullying. A mom who hates her husband. Uh, overtly or perhaps covertly underneath she resents her husband. On the surface she puts on a show of uh, you know of service and being helpful and everything but underneath see there's some kind of a of a hatred there for what he did or maybe he didn't do anything but it's a hatred that's passed down from generation to generation from all the way from the Garden of Eden see women who are unloved and who resent and judge and hate their failing failing men beginning with her father who wasn't there for her so you see there's the first trauma right there father wasn't there for her and she hated him for it yeah I, I'll use the word hate okay now a lot of people that's something that they never want to face see because um, they just don't so they cover it up see we do that all the time don't we we go out in the world and we resent we resent someone but then we f but then we we go overboard and we're extra nice to cover up the resentment see uh, somebody asks us for a favor and we resent them for asking so then we cover it up and then we we go overboard and being compliant and nice and helpful to make up for, for the guilt for resenting see so a lot of people are spend their whole life being manipulated that way people asking for something they resent being asked and then in resentment then they go overboard to be extra nice so a lot of what people do that seems nice and helpful and also wonderful it's all a compensation it's a cover-up for hate underneath okay so the child is born into a f into a family. Now, obviously, if the father is abusive and cruel and vicious and violent and so on, then that's reason to hate. That's reason to judge. But a lot of times, dad is not so bad. Okay, he's just a regular guy. Goes to work, comes home. Underneath, she resents him and judges him. Now. Um, that could be a top that that's a topic for a whole other uh, series of videos and book in fact I've already written the books on the subject you can get my book the myths and mysteries of marriage or my other book putting the forever back in love and I go into the details of it but what you have is a, um, a lady who comes from a home where her father failed her he wasn't there for her. she went out in the world looking for love instead she found abuse or use maybe not abuse necessarily but use see men use women to support their ego now if men would love women see really love women then then the woman wouldn't have reason to judge him to resent him but men fa uh, use women to support their ego to support their pride see they they want the woman to lie to him to tell him that at the his animal man is what man really is all about which it's not see we we fell into the natural into the sensual through fa uh, through a failure at the very beginning of the human race when Adam failed so he could have lived forever perpetually renewed on a daily basis in God's light in God's love and he would live forever that way but instead he failed he cut himself off from God through doubt through ambition 
through listening to the serpent coached tongue of his wife instead of listening to God. See, instead of doing what was right, he was ambitious. So he got cut off from the father and then he began to die. Now it took him, um, what, 900 some odd years to die. It, t it only takes us from the time we're born, what, maybe 70 years if we're lucky. That's all we got, see. But uh, the, the point is that um, he no longer being able to live forever, perpetually renewed, then a substitute, a form of regeneration or generation came into being, and that was procreation. So Adam became animal. He changed. He literally changed from being a spiritual being to becoming an animal, okay, which had to procreate to sustain the race. It's that simple. So that's the, the environment that we're born into. You're born into a, a, a home with a, a failing dad, a chip off the old block from Adam, and a, a mom who resents her husband for failing. Okay? And so there you are. So they got together, and then they, uh, they spawned um, little failures. So you come into the world as an ego, a little ego, a cute little ego. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll grow up to be a, a big, big ego. Most people grow up to be big, nasty egos. Okay, pride is a compensation for what was. See, all these are all compensations. So there you have a, you're born into a family where into this family where there's intrigue. See, underneath and subcurrents of resentment and hostility and unfinished business and baggage from the past and all of that. Which breaks out into um, arguments and uh, a lot of times into divorce. Okay, so that's so there you have that. So sooner or later, and then you go out into the world and you in, into a world of uh, filled with people who come from similar families. Okay, and so um, a lot of people are angry. They're angry, angry at their mom for being willful angry at their mom for bossing them around or slapping them around or pressuring them or whatever, angry at dad for failing failing them. So they're angry. They go out in the world, they're angry, and then they, be, then they take it out on others as bullies or they're in rebellion. You see, a lot of kid, you see a lot of people in rebellion driving down the freeway at 90, 100 miles an hour for no reason, taking drugs, Stealing, putting graffiti on things, um, dropping out of school, and see, just naughty, rebellious, angry. See, angry. I remember when I was a kid. I remember when I was a kid. Um, uh, we would go to the, uh, you know, traditional church. We went to traditional church when I was a kid. See, I'm kind of a non-traditional pastor. I don't have a big church. See, this is what I do. Every Sunday morning, I have my radio program. So that's kind of like church for people who listen to it. It's good for them. Okay? I talk about important things. And um, and I have my internet. I have this and my YouTubes and my books and all these things to help people. See? So you, I'd like pe pe people to find their find their way to find God directly. In other words, I help them to find God. Then once they found God, they don't need me anymore. See how nice that is? Okay. So a lot of people, a lot of kids are rebel rebellious. Oh, yes, I was saying that, uh, so that, that we had a pastor. See, very nice. Kind of a, tr you know, what you would think of as a pastor. He looked like a pastor, talked like a pastor. And his wife was like a pastor's wife. And they adopted a couple of uh, kids. But these kids that they adopted, um, when they adopted them, they were already, uh, I don't know, they weren't babies anymore. They were already, you know, a little bit older. So they adopted them, but they, they, the kids came from a troubled home. But anyway, um, the, uh, the son had some issues, and the daughter, the adopted daughter, was complete, was totally rebellious. So it was quite a scandal. The pastor's uh, daughter was, um, you know, extremely rebellious. Okay, so what, what was going on? Well, first of all, she was angry. 
the, for all the people that had failed her. And secondly, she was rebelling against something. If there was nothing to rebel against, she wouldn't rebel. So undoubtedly there was some hypocrisy, or he was, uh, the pastor was nice but weak, or uh, he, um, who knows, okay? But she was rebelling against that. that. So a lot of people are angry and rebellious. So, so you are grown up, you come from an environment where there's a failing father. See, father should be like the Moses of the family, like David, like Jeremiah, Isaiah, Paul, Peter. See, man of George Washington, a man of char impeccable character, virtue, honor, full of grace and wisdom. Okay, courage, kindness, understanding, forbearance, long-suffering, a pillar of virtue. That's what Father is supposed to be. Okay? Um, but her father wasn't even close to that. At best, he was a, a nice people-pleaser. See? Made pop, being popular and all that too important. At best, he was halfway decent. So he, he um, in that sense, he was a failure like all men have failed. All men have failed. Their wives, myself included. See, there was only one, well, there was one man who didn't fail. And that was Christ. See, and that's why a lot of the ladies, when you read the story, you'll see a lot of ladies loved Jesus. They loved him. Why? Because he was the first man that, ha that had true love. Didn't use them. See? So, um, so kids are angry at their dad, even if he's a halfway decent dad. See, a lot of dads scratch their head. They wonder what happened. Went to work every day, came home, was a good provider, didn't drink, smoke, or gamble. Okay? Had a good job. We took vacation every summer. Kids went to good schools, and we had a nice house. And my kids, you know, there's something, there's some kind of a problem with communication. They wonder. That's well, because because father needs to have um, something extra. Okay, something extra, a connection with his creator, by which love flows through him from the creator. That's what he needs. A very special agape kind of a love, a corrective love. See, so he can correct ego, not in it with, but with, see, correct, but with, um, um, with a twinkle in his eye. In other words, not ang angry, that's another comp. See, when a man becomes angry, anger is a compensation. It's a, fa it's a failing. See, so with, uh, with uh, great wisdom, and gentleness and uh, strength. He um, corrects ego naughtinesses. Now, egos are naughty by nature, whether it's kids, whether it's his wife, whether it's other people. See, and thereby, as he corrects others, he corrects himself too. See, a man should be out, shouldn't have any vices. And what weaknesses he has, he should be outgrowing them. And he becomes more fatherly to his wife. See, instead of, instead of, um, wanting her naughtiness, being excited by her naughtiness, see, cultivating her naughtiness, or resenting her, see, for her naughtiness. He should stand as a contrast to her emotionality. He should stand as a contrast to emotionality and to naughtiness and to ego excesses. Okay? He stands as a contrast and gently corrects. See? Now, um, that's what egos need. That's what they really need deep down inside. It, it just like, for example, we all, we're all familiar with the spoiled kid. We've heard stories or we've known spoiled kids. Spoiled kids acting, acting out. See? And a lot of times people um, have been appeasing them, and catering to them, and giving in. See? But that's not what the child really wants. Deep down inside, what the child wants is for someone to say no and mean it, but with a twinkle in his eye. Firm, 
if need be, but with a twinkle in his eye. See? That's what he needs. Well, that's what the child needs. That's what we all need. We all need correction. We all do. Now, okay, so now let's get down to the a very important uh, point here that I want to make for all of you, whether you're a lady or a man or an adult child from a dysfunctional home or a parent yourself, whatever you are. Number one, your father failed you in some way. You can still be okay, just don't resent him. You can find God yourself, see, who is actually your, God is your real father. He's your parent spirit. Your earthly father stood in for a while, and he probably didn't do a very good job. If he did a good, fairly good job, then be grateful for that, okay? If he didn't do a good job, then just don't resent him. Don't hate him, okay? That's, that's the key. Don't resent your father. Then you'll be able to find your heavenly father. When you have his, when you sense his love and his presence, see? then you'll be fine, okay? So your resentment of your, of your earthly parents and, uh, any, and other people, your resentment of anything or your, of yourself, resentment stands in the way, it blocks you, blocks you from salvation, blocks you from changing for the better, okay? But especially resentment of your father, that's the cardinal mistake people make. So even if your father was not so good, okay, see that he was not so good, but just don't hate him for it. It's, that's all. Then you can be okay. 